So we're going to be moving on to round two. And from here, I'm thinking I want to see... Actually, let me scroll up so I can see round one. I'm thinking... Man, I've never had such a... Such a luxury of choice. Hmm... Oh, no one game sound? Yeah, that's intentional. Oh shit! No, that w that was intentional, so they didn't hear the the. You know what? Screw it. The opening lady is gonna be on there every time we get into a match. It's gonna be, you know, battle interface initialize or whatever she says. But yes, that was a mistake. My bad. Once a tournament, as always, got it out of the way quickly. So, next match, I... Oh, and Scaryland, Sparkle, Mech, and Zadia are the maps for the next round. Oh, who do I want to show off? Who do I want to watch? I want to... I'm trying to think of what's an even match here. Round two is... Hmm. Let's see... Oh, Man of 12 and FFC! Absolutely, Man of 12 and FFC. Oh, I've just been asked in private chat, which you can't see, what graphics card do I have in my system to do the casts? I have a NVIDIA GTX 970, though I am planning to get a RTX 3070 as soon as supplies come in. But for the moment, the RTX 3070 is just not a thing. Like, it, it's it's sold out everywhere, and of course with COVID and everything, it, productions are... Production speed is completely a mess. Oh, okay, well we got a request for who to do, but honestly... Okay. I'll keep an eye on Hexit Fan, because people are asking, hey, do Hexit Fan. And I was like, okay, but I have already said Manu 12 and FFC. Like, I don't wanna I don't wanna change that. I've already made that decision. So next round I will do Hexit Fan. But yeah, so for now, Mano 12 and FFC on whatever map of their choice. And we will be getting into that shortly. Alright, Scary Land has been banned out by FFC. Just waiting on the on the pick. Oh wait, no, yes. Yeah, okay, so we're waiting on Sorry, I was talking, I was speaking out loud because there's a bit of a dispute about who's banning the map first. Steel Blue and Yogg stuff would probably be pretty balanced, but I think Magman versus FFC is also going to be balanced. And so the, for those of you who are new, the way I typically do tournaments is that I will go with the strongest players for the first round or two, and then look at some of the mid mid-range or lower-ranked players in round, like, especially round four. Round four, I almost always go for whoever's currently at the bottom, just to get a... Okay, we won't make it in Sonya. So yeah, we... I go for whoever's kind of at the bottom. Probably should probably write that down. Oh, no, I, I'm not gonna write that down. It's just too hard. If I end up casting multiple games, it's gonna be a pain in the butt.
but yeah, sorry, I just realized the background audio was way too loud. So yeah, with the so the first couple rounds, typically strongest players, and then round three it kind of varies. Round four or five, I will typically go for whoever is at the bottom of the standings just to give them some time on stream. And then round six, sometimes round five, because sometimes round five, it's just like you, you know who is going to be winning, so you want to do it in round five. But yeah, round five or so round four, I almost always go for the bottom of the standings. Round five, sometimes I also go kind of middling bottom. But more recently, I've been going to the top again. So definitely round three, four, yeah, newer players or whatever, they'll get some time to shine. Anyway, we were on Mech Ad and Sonya. Because that is how this works. What the heck? OBS, why are you being why are you doing this to me? Properties. Alright, there we go. Apologies for the brief flickering, but we are back. So, menu twelve. And FFC. Sort of hanging out. Are they connected? I think they're connected. No, they. Oh yeah. Okay. Minute. FFC. Going for cloak bots. Manu twelve. Not going at all. Hmm. Where is Manu twelve starting? I don't see any sign of Manu twelve starting. What the heck? Oh, FFC going, FFC going for shield bots. Oh. Oh, hello. Manu 12 starting over here. All right, we're getting games down today. Jump bots on the cliff. Now, bear in mind that unlike on... Vanilla at Ansonia, there is in fact a ramp up to the cliff, so it's not like you can just build it there and it'll be a free thing your opponents can't deal with. However, it will be difficult for your opponents to deal with. That is still absolutely the case. FFC on shields going for... Eh, kind of early raid setup. This map does tend to be a little bit slow to start. Even with the crates. Even with all the reclaim, it's still a little slow to start. And shield versus jump bot. I've I'm of the opinion that it's a fairly even matchup. Although late game I could see moderators really dealing with shield balls well. But early game, you know, bandit versus pyro, it's not too bad all things considered. However, Manu 12 is forcing FFC on the back foot, which is exactly what they want. And Manu 12 can basically just expand wherever they'd like to along this entire area, and nothing is going to stop them. So Manu 12, I'm sure they're pretty happy with that. FFC, they've only gotten their initial three metal extractors that are essentially the main base. I mean, they have the entire plateau to work with, but they have not taken any of the rest of it. And this pyro just continuing to cause all sorts of headaches for FFC. So I really like this micro from Manu 12. So FFC also impressively making sure that none of their bandits get killed. Just make sure to cycle whichever ones are in front. But now it might be too late for who it remains to be seen. One of the bandits does go down. Two of them go down thanks to the fire. And looks like Manu 12 has done the job they wanted to do. Pyro made cost. Manu 12 was able to expand forward quite aggressively. Oh my goodness. That is... That is just bullying. How aggressive Manu 12 is expanding right now. And of course, this entire time, we do have other... We have constables and such that are building up and will be expanding in the back. But Manu 12's commander, just going straight forward, does not want to waste any time... Second phase of the assault's happening here. Manitoul's commander is going to be found out trying to do the little proxy strat. Or not really proxy, just more hard push strat. But at the same time, there's not much that FFC can really do to stop them. Without switching over to... 
Actually, come to think of it, what would they switch over to? Racketeers wouldn't be a bad idea, but it's a little much for cost. Rogues would work okay, but they might have a hard time hitting. Outlaws would probably not be able to get in a range. So, man, man in 12 with one pyro just completely dominating this match. Like, not letting anyone else come in, have a word in edgewise. This has got to be embarrassing. Oh, the Pyro's coming into the main base, ripping apart everything. I don't know if FFC has an answer to this. And they do not. That is game. Surprisingly quick game, actually. I did not expect that to happen. Well, okay. Inevitably, that means that we're going to be having another match. Because that was... That was that. So, you know what? Hexit fan is in luck. I said I would do them next. I wasn't sure if I... Wait. Oh, hang on. Is that over already? Well, it's not marked on stream, but... I don't know. Apparently it's still going. Well, anyway, let's check out Magman versus Hexafan. I think... This is not going to be an even match, but I do want to get... That he was specifically asked to do Hexadvan versus Magman. I expect it will be pretty one-sided. But then again, I thought Manu 12 and FFC would be even, and Manu 12 just completely wrecked FFC with a couple of Pyros. So, Magman go over Cloakbot Factory. Hexadvan also go over Cloakbot Factory. Hexit fan managing to defend reasonably well against some early raids, but there's oh boy, half a dozen glaze or almost a dozen glaze coming in from the eastern side of the or western side of the map already though. Reavers are up, so Hexit fan able to at least set up a defense against this. Magman taking advantage of the position to start expanding around the map, but Hexit fan able to keep up, and Hexit fan is actually. Ooh. Wow, I'm sorry, Hexit fan. I didn't realize you were actually pretty darn good at this game. Here I'm going on about how, yeah, and I'll, I'll feature them later on when it's the lower level. Thing. No, 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 no. This is actually real good. Actually, quite, it's, this is quite impressive. So, Hexafan's still behind, granted. Ma Magman, Magman is still up ahead. But Hexafan is not doing too badly, all things considered. They're only 10 metal per second behind, so 30 to 40. I know, a bit of reclaim here and there will do the trick. And there is a lot of things... Oh, okay, mostly energy. Some metal reclaim, a lot of energy reclaim. Ooh, Hexafan... Actually, pretty well prepared to the defense of the sides. Although I'm starting to feel like Magman might just be playing with Hexafan. Not gonna lie, it is starting to feel like this is a little bit of a game. I mean, we'll see. It's definitely unclear... I'm just getting that impression that Hexit fans not really being pushed that hard. Magman's just seeing what they can do to really just mess around, but not really try to find the actual way to win. Going in there, Hexit fan is... They're well prepared for a lot of glaives. Magman, however, I don't know, two dozen glaives, that's... That's going to be too much for even... I don't know. There's no, there's no way the Reavers are going to be able to deal with this. I think this is pretty much it. Magman going for the push. They're going to try. And there it goes. Magman with the push. Coming in here pretty strong. Although, unfortunately, not really spreading their glaives out that much, so the Rogan, Ronin are getting a lot of free shots in here. Magman, why are you not using line move with this many glaives? I mean, the Ronin, they got a bunch of free damage. Granted, it didn't get a kill, but it was close. One or two more rockets, that could have killed three or four glaives. Like, Ronin aren't really supposed to beat glaives that easily. And at this point, Hexafan actually managing to take an advantage on the economy. 
not even really raiding, just defending well and building up. Sides, however, going over to the north side of the map, and those are going to be scary. Hexapan looking to do a bit of scouting over to the side. Just doesn't really have the units going in for much in the way of aggression. Like, they have the economy. They have a stronger economy than Magman, actually. Certainly in terms of production potential. But it's all gone into their commander. Now going for an air factory. Might be able to pull off something with a Thunderbird or maybe a Phoenix. But I am not think I am not confident about that. Like, I'm sorry, but I just do not think there's going to be much that'll actually be made to work with this. Blaze coming in here, trying to get rid of the knife, but it's just too much damage. Sides coming in as a defense. Hexafan able to just wipe down no problem. Fortunately, Hexafan does lose the northwest, but fortunately for them, they take a lot of attrition damage, or they, they deal a lot of attrition damage in return. Another knight goes down, possibly a third. There's the third. The last knight able to escape to tell the story of how its compatriots fell. But Hexapan is making this difficult for Magman. Magman with some reclaim. What are they reclaiming? Ah, not much. Just some of the glaives that are over here. Same time, though, nothing was really set up over to the northeast. Magman sees this, goes in, and will be able to take it out. A lot of glaives used to do so, but they will pretty much... I think one may die? Maybe? Maybe. Yes, one died. Oh, two died, in fact. I oh, know, three, three casualties. Near perfect. More are going to die from the explosions coming in from these power plants than anything else. Still, the air factory is up for Hexafan. They do have Phoenixes coming in. They have Ravens as well. I mean, the Ravens are the obvious choice against Knights. So just throw that in there. Make sure that they can't really come in and do much. Makes sense. Like, hit the Knight. They're not going to be able to deal much damage to the Raven, but the Raven is able to... You know, a couple Ravens... Three Ravens will kill a Knight. Oh, and Hexafan coming in along the side here. Trying to set up a bit of a shot, and that is... It looks like it's going to work. Hexafan able to defend their northeast, taking quite a bit of damage, but all the reclaim is theirs! 1.3k reclaim. All for Hexafan, throwing the caretaker in the middle to grab it. And Hexafan, about even on attrition, but with all that reclaim, they should be able to at least even out the economy. At the same time, Magman has managed to get a lot of overdrive to power their own metal. Ooh, this actually might not work. With this many knights, the ravens probably won't be able to get in and do much damage. Again, it, it requires three to kill. Waves coming in there, however, on the distracted knights. Good play. Make sure the knights are not focused on nothing so they don't target the ravens. Still a lot of damage being done. Magman, they have the economy to recover from this even if they lose all of these knights. Just having twice the economy is that strong. Mostly the center, honestly. That's largely what it... Well, the center and also the fact that this northeast area was lost. Hexafan now finally managing to get their reclaim up. But it may be too little too late. Again, more reclaim coming in from this massive assault over the bottom. But again, it's just a question of whether or not there's going to be anyone to reclaim. And Hexafan's commander out over here doing nothing. Getting repaired, but not actually reclaiming all this stuff. If they reclaimed that stuff, I think Hexafan would have an even economy. But Magman, they're pulling ahead on attrition. Hexafan really doesn't have much to deal with this. And I'm guessing Gremlins... There they are. Yep, there's the Gremlins. So these Raven's Days are numbered. Oh, and a Jump Bot Factory. Proxy Jump Bot Factory coming from Hexafan. Oh. Able to still bomb out Magman's commander. Unfortunately, not for long. The Juggernaut pulling everything to the ground. Oof. Just cannot do much damage, but it, they tried. But now Magman's commander is in a very tight spot. What the heck? Yeah, Magman and their commander is not happy. 
Not in the slightest. This is going... This is... Hexafan trying desperately to get back in this game, but it's just not happening. Everything they try is falling apart. Magman, however, has run out of reclaim, if that's any consolation. Which I quite frankly don't think it is. But maybe... Just maybe, there might be ways of getting out in here, putting Magman on the back foot again. I mean, it's only a little under a thousand metal attrition difference. Hexavan has the right units to deal with what they're fighting. And I like the fact that they are not harassing the front lines. Like, this is, this is smart play. They know that their air units can't do much against the front lines. Go around the sides. I mean, as best as you can. But now it's just a question of what to do with... This Juggernaut coming in here, tearing apart a bunch of the Ronin. The Ronin, most of them able to get out of the range, but it's just not enough. Ooh. And that's... Oh, that is the Juggernaut. That is the power of the Juggernaut. So much damage. Now, more attempts at bombing coming in here. Not going to work out. I mean, heck, we're going to do that. Bomb the Juggernaut. Even if it's got so much HP, it won't matter. Oh, there's no special tool for the reclaim. I'll I'll show the reclaim amount thing in a second. It's not a special tool. It's built into the game, but it's default off. Oh, well, Leek will be able to do some damage, but it goes down. Oh, two thousand metal. Oof. Okay, Magman really getting ahead on this attrition. Juggernaut about to go down, but even that, like the Juggernaut, is actually cheaper than the Leeko. That is not going to be enough to make up for that. I think Hexafan. I don't know if Hexafan is going to be holding on. They're still in this. I mean, there's, it's getting trickier and trickier. Unfortunately, did not see those Glaives losing 5 metal per second off the Reclaim. Actually, 10 because they forced the retreat of the remaining Conjurer. Oh, that has got to hurt. This looks like it'll be it. I don't see Hexafan having an easy way out of this. Magman, however... I mean, it took him a little while to get in. I gotta say, you know, that wasn't a bad request. Now, Hexafan versus Magman actually was a very even match. Well, I'll keep that in mind, you know. Sometimes, you know, if people in chat have the requests. I mean, I, I'm i happy to take them. It's just that having already made that decision, it's like, I don't want to change it up. I already kind of told people in the lobby. It's like, yeah, let's just, let's stick with it. But yeah, this was a great... This was actually a really good match. I mean, Hexafan was definitely struggling. There was an uphill struggle on their part, but they did it well. Like, they... Holding on, and I guess it's not technically over? I mean, the economy stats, Magman is so far ahead. I don't know what Hexafan has, other than maybe managing to come out of the commander, and even then, I would be surprised if the commander is able to do much more than take out a few metal extractors and then die. Just because that's... It's up against a large army value difference. But that being said, actually, what is the army value difference? Let's, let's find out. So that is... that. Uh, if you look at army value... Oh, yeah. 7,000 metal difference. This... Total value is 10,000. Oof. I mean, other value doesn't quite make up for army value, but it comes close. Now, 4,000 in the commander and 2,000 in the rest of the army. Hexafan going for an Anthbot factory. Do they have a particular plan with this? I mean, unfortunately, the drones give away the commander position, so the Glaze would know something is up. But it might not be enough. Okay, so this is this is where you build... Okay, phantoms are a good idea. Phantom or sling. To get rid of the juggernaut. Phantom's probably the better idea, because the slings can be jumped on. Uh, as it is, Magman just... So many glaives. So many glaives. So many gremlins, too. There's no easy way out of this. And then two juggernauts going in the main base. The phantoms are going to come in here. That's what... 400 damage for all three of them? Yeah, something like. But it's... It can only go so far. Juggalot taking... It's taking it. Running with it. Doesn't really care if it can walk in. I mean, there's a second Juggalot behind this. So good luck holding on. And now one of the Phantoms has been revealed. There's the Juggalot coming in. Ooh. Alright, well. Got softened up well, anyway. 
Fortunately, these phantoms are not targeting the juggernaut. They need to target the juggernaut if there's any hope in any reality that Hexit Fan is going to get out of this. And I just don't know. Like, they gotta target these gremlins going in, screening out, getting rid of one of the phantoms. Or at least opening up for the glaives to get rid of one of the phantoms. Still a lot of value for those phantoms to get rid of the juggernauts. Yeah, I could... I'm curious what Magman's hockey is for that, because they're constantly switching between pull and push. Anyway. Hexit fan! Taking all the damage in the world. Glaive's going around the back ship. Oh, there's the fact. Ah, oh, fusion reactor goes down. Takes care of most of the power infrastructure. Even if this is defended against, there just is not really the resources to push back. Lobs are being set up. I'm... Are we seeing a Hexaman going for a, a commander throw? This is a backyard commander throw coming from Hexaman. Neat idea, but I think it might be too little too late. I don't think pulling the commander into the back is going to be enough. Oh, backyard scallop throw. Honestly, backyard commander throw would be the better option for the timing. Like, there just has been so much invested into this commander, and it is invested into attack. It's still only 10 metal, or, yeah, 10 build power. 10 metal per second out from that commander. I can see the use of it here, but at the same time, using it to throw the commander around the back and just have a super, basically a Strider class unit in your opponent's backyard, that's probably the best use of the commander right now. Just for how much has been invested into it. Oh, and of course, Phantom's coming in here from Magman as well, because why not? Come in here, take out everything else. Yeah, not really a whole lot can be done here. I like these, the Reavers, getting rid of the puppies, but again, the Phantoms just put shut down everything. Oh, Default Hockey is... Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing Terex in chat is, or Terex in chat is one of Hexit Fan's friends. They were the one who requested that I watch the Hexit Fan match, and they were pointing out that Hexit Fan is basically like a cockroach who never dies. And now, just for for the sake of reference, as a rule, if you're probably going to lose in a tournament, yeah, hold on. But if it's not a tournament, it's, it's a little bit rude to try to keep going if you know you have no way in. Granted, Hexen fan is still holding on. Like, they're not holding on in vain. I mean, granted, it's all coming down to this backyard push. Like, this is a slow death. But Hexen fan, while they are managing to reclaim their way back into a reasonable economy, they are getting farther and farther behind in terms of metal. Oops. Or rather, in terms of army value. Blood Factory about to go down. I don't even think, even with the scallop throw, that this is going to be anything. Yeah, there's... Like, losing the main base is huge. That is their energy economy. They cannot build at full power. I guess they could start building up tidal plants, and that's exactly what it looks like they're going to do, just away from the coast to avoid being spotted. But, I mean, to be fair, this is a thing, in theory... Or at least that's Hexafan's thinking. This is not a thing. This is this is Hexafan trying desperately to get through. These the problem is if these scallops cannot deal with all the phantoms and all the glaives, which actually there are riotous, they could be able to get rid of all the glaives. But there's not a lot of economy concentrated back here. So while it's not a bad idea in general to throw into your opponent's backyard, because if they're really focused on the north on the forward side of the map and you have the units that would counter what they have. It's not a bad idea because, you know, you break their base and then break their army and then kind of snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. But that requires that you at least have something to fall back to, which, I mean, Hexafan does far less than Magman because Magman, they only have 
a few power plants in their main base. Like, they have 40 power in their main base. Out of 120, if they lost their entire main base, they'd still have plenty of energy. They, I mean, they'd still be accessing, but they still have the energy required to avoid accessing if they had enough caretakers to avoid accessing. Scalp throw is coming in, however. It is. There it is. Scalp's jumping around the back. Oh, the fusion reactor might be actually the suicide here. Does damage the scallop, but does not kill them. Well, that is at least a factory kill. But now the surprise has been lost. Of course, we might see scallop throw onto here. And if we saw scallop throw over to the coast by the jump out factory, it might work out. But no, switch over to puppies. The scallop simply won't have the numbers, or one of the firepower to deal with this number of puppies. I don't know why they're saying they're lost to This is a Swiss tournament. I, mean, I guess they'll be probably not on stream again, so fair enough. But there they go. Getting rid of the metal extractors. Trying to break apart Magman's economy. At the very least, it's... It's something. But Magman has wiped out everything on land. They have literally wiped out everything save for one conjurer. That is it. And you start, this entire time, Magman's expanding, so they're not really losing anything. Okay, now Hexafan throws in the towel. That is it. That is game. That was kind of... That was kind of funny. But yeah, for reference, in tournament, that's okay-ish. If you think you have a reasonable chance of winning. If you're playing in ladder, though, it's like... Or matchmaking, just... Just don't. Just don't. It's, it's not... If... No, if you if you know you've lost, it's kind of rude to keep your opponent busy with that. Anyway, the oh yeah, yeah, I'll fine. I'll do I'll do yours next. Anyhow, people were asking about the the reclaim. So settings. Actually, I'll select a. No, I won't bother. Settings interface reclaim highlight. This is toggle field summer. I believe is default off. Turn that on, and then you can have. Oops. You can have. No, choose choose when the reclaim is shown. I'm oh, sorry, that's reclaim. That's the little flashing thing. The summary is at the top. Toggle field summary goes away, but you can have it on, and yeah. It's... What the? Oh dear, there might be a bug. It's weird. Okay, so you might actually have to turn it. it might be a new game thing or Lua UI reload thing anyway yeah so interface reclaim highlight I have it for with constructor selected but you can have it when economy overlays on which I have on all the time but or just always and yeah it is built into the game there's nothing about it that's there's no local widget or anything so that I think is going to be it for for round two. Yes, that was the last round match of round two. So let's update the standings. And okay, is the right mana twelve Golda Dregs Yogs of the Petrol Shatra all have two wins. Alrighty. And let's see, besides that we have well, we'll wait until the next round is actually picked. Man, that is basically that. So we'll have the next round in a, as soon as that's ready. I think we're going to be... I think I might take a small break, actually. Can you get some water? So stay tuned. We'll be back with round three in just a moment.